Uh, hello, this is David, and this will be the first in a video series on game theory. Game theory as that applies to poker. Uh, if you'd like to, to read any more on this, I'd advise you to read David Sklansky's Theory of Poker, and go to chapter 19 where he discusses game theory used for bluffing in poker. Uh, we learn to use it both for optimal bluffing, for defense, and also for preemptive construction of ranges so that we can attack without being exploited. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about times to use game theory and not to use game theory. Okay, but anyway, to illustrate it to begin with, uh, I'm going to use a little one-card poker game. Okay, with this little one-card poker game, each player anties one dollar. Okay, player one draws one card, either a queen or ten. It's going to be one of these four cards at random. He receives them all in equal proportion. He doesn't get to pick it, it's dealt to him randomly. Player two is always dealt to Jack. Now with this game, there's a two dollar pot because each player has anted one dollar. They each get a card. They turn over the cards and see who wins. As you can see, it's an even game. The Jack will beat the tens, the Jack will lose to the queens. It's exactly even. Okay, and the uh, player one knows that player two has a Jack. And player two knows that player one has one of these cards at random. Now what we'll do next is we're going to introduce betting to this game. Okay, we're going to give player one the option to make a bet. When player one draws his card, one of these four, he looks at it. He then has the option of either betting two dollars, which is a full pot bet, or folding his hand. So the only two options he has, he cannot check. He either bets two dollars or he folds. Player two also has two options. He can either call the $2 bet, or he can fold. And that's the whole game. Now, uh, with this, you may wonder how player one can derive advantage at all. It still looks like an even game. And uh, if he's a very tight player who never bluffs, of course, he can't get any advantage. He'll be folding when he gets tens, and he'll be betting when he gets queens. Uh, that strategy will be very obvious to player two, who will simply fold any time player two bets. And per 100 hands, uh, the most uh, player one can possibly make is a hundred dollars. He uh, he gets you know he gets the fifty he gets uh, the queens fifty times uh, where he picks up the two dollar pot and then he loses the other. And there's really nothing uh, it looks like he can do about it. Now if he was a bluffer, say he bluffed all the time, then player two also would have a very easy time of it, since he knows the player two is always bluffing. He simply will always call. He'll expect to see queens half the time and tens half the time, and it'll be split. But if player one uses some game theory, he can actually have a way to have a forced win no matter what player two does, no matter how good player two is, no matter how good his read is. And what he does, what he does, he does this by betting optimally. Okay. Now, is optimally what is optimal bluff? What it is is the frequency the player one can bluff and be unexploitable and maximize his profits against the perfect opponent. And here's the frequency. When bluffing optimally, our bet should have the same ratio of value to bluffs as the pot odds that we offer our opponent. If we're betting full pot, offering our opponent two to one pot odds for his call, we should have a hand that expects to be best when called twice as often as we have a bluff hand. In this example, our betting ranges should be composed of two-thirds value hands and one-third bluffs. Okay, so let's look at this again. When we bet $2 into the $2 pot, we create a $4 pot. It costs our opponent $2 to call. So he's getting 2 to 1 on his money. Since we're offering him 2 to 1, our ratio of value bets to bluffs should also be 2 to 1. In 100 draws, we know that we're going to draw the queens 50 times and be making our value bet. We also know that we'll be drawing the tens 50 times. Well, we want our value bets to be twice as frequent as our bluffs. So what we're going to do is simply bluff half the time that we get tens. And this is just the same as we do in poker. Uh, we're drawing to a hand. We have bouts to make our hand the two queens. We'll choose a bluff card. We'll choose the ten of hearts. So if we're dealt one of the queens or the ten of hearts, We'll make our $2 bet, and if we get the 10 of spades, we can fold. Uh, this maximizes our profit, and there's absolutely nothing that uh, 
that you can do about it, no matter how he plays. And I'll demonstrate this now. Okay. In 100 hands on average, player one makes 50 value bets. That's the 50 times out of 100 that he draws the queen. He makes 25 bets and 25 folds. This is his other 50 hands. He's going to be drawing a 10 uh, 50 times. Half of the time he's bluffing and half of the time he's just folding. This strategy will guarantee player one a profit of $150 per 100 hands, regardless of what counter strategy player two adopts. And I'll show you two examples. In example one, player two is going to always call. When player two always calls, player one will be making 50 value bets at $4 each. He'll win all his value bets, and that'll be a $200 profit, four times 50. Because as we know, there is $2 in the pot from the antes, and he bets $2. So that creates a $4 profit for him to win when player two decides to call. He'll also be making 25 bluffs per 100 at $2 each. And since he's always getting called, he'll lose every one of these bluffs. But that doesn't matter. He made $200 in his value bets. 200 minus 50 is 150. He has a net profit of 150 per 100 hands. Now, of course, it's really only a $50 profit because he put up a dollar ante for each hand. But anyway, per 100 hands, he's, he's making a profit on the back of player two. Now, suppose player two decides to always fold instead of always calling. How does this fix? Well, he makes more money on his bluffs and less on his value bets, but it comes out the same. Uh, in, in 100 hands, he's going to make 50 value bets for $2 each. And since player two is always folding, he's only going to win $100. He'll pick up the antes 50 times. But his bluffs will now make money. He makes 25 bluffs at $2 each, and this picks up $50. So again, he comes out ahead $150 per 100 hands, which is a $50 profit after his expense in the blinds. So in this case, we see the player one, by adopting this strategy, is indifferent to whether player two calls or folds. He makes the same amount of money in either case. And this is what we should do when we're against a very good opponent uh, who we're worried might exploit us. Okay? Uh, to review. Uh, player one is going to draw a card. When he gets a queen, 50 times out of 100, he's going to bet $2. When he gets the 10 he's going, of hearts, he's going to bet. When he gets the 10 of spades, he folds. He's offering his opponent 2 to 1 pot odds. So his ratio of, pot, of bluffs to made hands is also going to be 2 to 1. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to show an example from a real poker game that illustrates where we can use this exact principle. We're going to say that this is the board on our. We have 8 of clubs, 7 of clubs. Uh, we have an open end straight here with the 5, 6. This is the board on the turn. And we have a pot of $100. What our plan is, is if we make our straight, on, we're going to bet full pot. And we have eight outs to make our straight. Now, what we want to do is have a ratio of uh, two value bets to every one bluff. So if we have eight outs to make our straight, we need four bluff cards. Okay? And that gives our value uh, two to one ratio, which is just the same as the pot out that we offer our opponent. Okay? So we're going to choose some bluff cards. Uh, what we can do here is we can choose some bluff cards that represent a flush, for example. Uh, and we'll choose four of them. What we'll do, there are nine hearts that make the flush, but two of them also make our straights. So we won't count them. That leaves seven. Uh, all we'll do is we'll take off the three biggest hearts, the ace of hearts, the queen of hearts, and the jack of hearts. So on the river, if we make our straight, or if hard is dealt, anyone other than those top three hearts, we will bet full pot. And there's nothing our opponents can do. Okay? Uh, we'll have two value hands for every bluff, and we'll be maximizing our profit just as we did in our little fictitious game. Okay, that's it for part one. Part two will be on the defensive side of optimal bluffing.